welcome friends to the video presentation of a direct sinus lift procedure incision flap reflection and suturing are not in the purview of this video this patient had lost the maxillary right second thin and he required direct sinus lift procedure a window is marked the window should be at least 1 cm in diameter sparing the roots of the adjacent teeth we always use round burr because fissure burr leaves sharp margins and it can inadvertently dip into the sinus and perforate the lining the position of the window should be in precise alignment of the implant to be put with a very gentle and loving shaving motion the marking is deepened and as you see the gray area becomes darker and darker as we reach near the maxillary sinus lining by no means we want to completely perforate with the burr but as the gray area becomes deeper we just want to leave a thin bony margin which can be fractured by a blunt instrument and by no means we check the perforation by any sharp instrument but an instrument like an excavator once we have approximately separated we just push the window and fracture that thin margin here on the distal area the bone is still intact and that bone piece cannot be moved so we need to cut further bone here and once this small bone piece is separated from the rest of the bone but it is intact and is snyderian membrane is attached to it maintaining the blood supply with a, again a delicate instrument we should separate the snyderian membrane from the outer bone all around it keeping the snyderian membrane intact with that particular bone piece there is no need to go deeper but once we have separated we gently push the small bone piece inside the sinus gently and lovingly and patiently this maneuver is going to further separate the snyderian membrane from the bone the snyderian membrane being very delicate and any direct maneuver can perforate it and we should always go on checking that our snyderian balloon is perforated or not we ask the patient to inhale and exhale and when the patient inhales the bone piece and the snyderian membrane goes inside and when he exhales the snyderian membrane and the bone piece comes outside this means that this movement means that our snyderian membrane balloon is not not punctured the surface of the maxilla is very uneven in the sinus and this is the only maneuver which can controlled we can have a controlled reflection of the snyderian membrane remember we want to put this small bone piece which is vertical now horizontal deep inside so that we can rest it on the implant we should be as deep and as i can show you in this picture this is, should be the horizontal position and then once that separation is done we put an implant and you can see the torque which is we have gained as the head moves and once the implant is in position we want to maneuver that vertical piece on the implant this position of the horizontal piece is of prime importance it should be loose it should be very easily kept on the apex of the implant and as we can see very carefully 
slight mobility we can see when the patient breathes. I really appreciate this technique because first we have not lost any bone we utilize almost all the bone and the dead space that we are leaving now that the horizontal the vertical bone piece rests on the apex of the implant and the all the if we can consider the four walls of this sinus lift what we have done each and every wall has the capacity to form bone Snyderian membrane does have periosteum so the Snyderian membrane will form bone the floor of the sinus itself is bone and the this hole that we have been made which will be sutured with the mucoperiosteum and this again periosteum will form bone so this cavity that we are leaving inside the dead space we are leaving inside each and every area of that cavity is bone forming provided provided it doesn't get infected so since few patients have stopped putting bone graft in direct sinus lift procedures I always fear microscopic perforation of the Snyderian membrane during this maneuver. And we are dealing with two most infectious cavities. One is the maxillary sinus and the second is the oral cavity and which are very likely to get infected. But at the same time they have tremendous tremendous blood supply and if it gets infected and there is some bone graft inside it is very difficult for itself to heal because most of the bone graft are synthetic and once the bacteria reach the synthetic bone graft or even the infected autogenous bone graft if the in bacteria reach them the body cannot heal it but if we leave this cavity inside wait for one year i am very sure that in most most of the patient this cavity will be filled with bone